Hey everyone, and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. So, as of the last episode, uh, we have our walking back, turning right, and turning left. Uh, as you can see, we've got a player HUD now. Um, and I also worked out the whole switching out the names of the different hallways, uh, or the different areas of the map, whatever you want to call your cameras, for example. I've also um, imported a new camera font. So I've got that kind of classic cam uh, CCTV kind of look to the, t uh, to the font. I've even added in a timer now that runs real time. So you can set it to whatever de time of day you want and it will run uh, as a 24 hour clock. So what I quite like about that idea is that the longer your players play your game, the longer that time will run. So if they start, at, if you started your game at midday, for example, and they made it back to midday, it would actually run as if they were um, playing realistically in a real game. It needs to be slowed down a little bit. Uh, it's a, it's a little bit too fast for real daytime because that seconds is is going a little bit too fast. But it's it's actually pretty close. I I, I got it. I played around with it for a while. Um, and I got it as close as I could, but you can always reduce that in yours. Um, I'm going to show you how I did this today. So we're going to be setting up our player HUD. The only thing I haven't done for my player HUD, uh, which will be covered in this video, is the health because um, I want to um, start messing around with um, some actual other stuff first. Um, tomorrow's episode, I'm hoping I'm going to do the sort of level transition. Um, so we'll we'll get to that hopefully tomorrow. Uh, and that's a big one. That, that's probably what 80% of people's games will have in it. And a lot of it's not very covered well within the UE5 community. So hopefully that will be a beneficial episode for everybody. But without further ado, uh, let's get stuck into it. So um, I've got my camera. Now a lot of this I've covered in previous tutorials. But it's, it's all kind of updated sort of stuff. So I'm not going to do too much um, in the way of... Um, sort of um, recreating a lot of this but um, the first thing I did was I have set up a new folder called um, CCTV system I will be chucking everything that, that kind of runs into the system into this file uh, one of which is I dragged in this font um, I will put the link to the to the download uh, in the description um, but it is literally as simple as just dragging it in and UE5 will pick up a bring up a sort of uh, window that says do you want to import this as font obviously just say yes um, and it will do everything for you it makes it into like a font file um, and when you come to your widget to amend your text it was automatically kind of in here for me so Unreal 5 is brilliant in that sense that it kind of does a lot of this work for you um, when it comes to fonts you just need to drag it in I'm not gonna set up a whole three minute tutorial to be like download your font drag it to your file um a lot of people have done that and it's, it's just not needed you know you just drag it in and unreal will do the work for you uh so it's really really helpful and it automatically updates it even for the text that's just sort of defaulted um as for the record it is literally just a red um robo font on bold um and I thought that was effective enough. I didn't really want to go and download another font just to get that kind of style. I think that's good, really good. Uh, I might change the throbber image, but that is literally just the default throbber set to number of pieces one. And um, I've just put the red tint on it um, and red color. Um, and and literally that's all I've done for that to get that, that effect. Obviously everything is tied to the middle of the screen. Um, so you don't have to worry about anything with that. Uh, as for the hallways now, that took me a little bit more to kind of get my head around. And it was actually really simple in the end. All I've done in here is I've exposed a new variable, uh, name variable called camera. It's called camera cam. It should be camera name. That That's embarrassing. Camera name. Um, and um, I've also set that variable up in the third person character. 
and it runs through we set that within the third person character so that we can pull that back in the widget um, and in here we we um, I've set it up on the event begin play because what I found was on the event begin if it wasn't on the event begin play it would be confused because it wouldn't realize the player had actually crossed into that collision box so I just set the name as and I've typed it up myself in here just so it's set so wherever your starting location is with your starting camera if this is something you're going for you need to just set the name manually in here um, because if I manually set that it's gonna get very confused so um, so yeah I've set that up like that and then again as I said just come in here and reset every time the viewport changes reset this uh, value so it's getting the new one and then in the widget just um, create a new binding under text uh, we'll go straight over to the graph instead oh here it is uh, just cast to the third person and get that value that we've set in, we've set in the um, in the camera switch and just set it to the return node. Um, and if we go back to the third the viewport or the third person map, should say even the viewport. Yeah, the viewport was right. Click on the uh, I don't know what why well partition was open there. Uh, go to whichever one your camera switch is. Um, and where is it? Um, da, ba, ba, ba. Advanced? No. Oh, it's because I'm on detail. Sorry, my apologies. There we go. Um, you've now got that new exposed um, field. So whatever, wherever you're wanting your scene to be set. So I've set this one to stairs, for example. I don't know why I've set it to hallway one, but because I, I, I thought I was going to have a couple of cameras set up here. I haven't got around to it. Um, but yeah, we've now got hallway one. So basically what it's doing is, A, that, that's that um, original... Um, setting is come up first so it always will come up first so if I now move my camera spawn into the stairs it will always say hallway one because it's the first one being set up but it automatically changes to stairs um, and it will change back automatically so really really simple way of setting it up in the end um, but yeah yeah quite quite effective if I do say so myself as for the time now I did cover this when I uh, set it up in a previous tutorial, I, I did do a um, day and night with clock. So a lot of the code is the same, but I've had to kind of rearrange it a little bit to fit within the widget, because it's all run through the widget. So using, I, I, without loading up the level, I won't be able to show you, but if you've, if you've set up that, that tutorial previously, all we need to do is get our delta time, times it by a new variable called day length, which I have changed dramatically less to get it to slow down a little bit. Um, is uh, I've set it to 0 0.004. So for anyone who watched that previous tutorial, uh, 30, the higher the value, the faster that, that clock will run. Um, and um, it drives how fast your day and night cycle runs. So if you want it closer to sort of real life time, you need to go to a lot smaller values. So for me, 0 0.004 um, is what it's running at now. And even now, I think it's still a little bit too, like marginally too fast. So I'm gonna set it to 0 0.003 and we'll see the effect in a moment. And that multiplication I'm putting into a new variable, which obviously wasn't in the time in the day, night clock video. Uh, I'm setting it to day speed and the reason I'm doing that is because in the other video it was obviously running all the code with off that event tick but what we we're only after the time so I've set it into this day speed um, setup so that in this binding I can call it again and it does exactly the same thing um, we're obviously timesing about 240 that gets into added to uh, tick which is again we set that new variable up ourselves. I don't know why it's kick slash zero, but it is. And it gets added to the tick, and then we set that as the tick. So it's constantly updating this tick um, as, along with the um, along with the event tick, right? We get a tourniquet, which gets put into a make time span. Now, I was going to add milliseconds in, but milliseconds goes up to a 1,000. And, uh, it, yeah, it just doesn't work quite as nicely. So I, I stuck with seconds in the end. Um, so go into the seconds. I've set the time up to be like half five, well, 534. 
just um, just to kind of make it seem like um, you're starting at a random time but again you can set yours to whatever you want and then you promote this to a time uh, variable and plug all this in together um, it's it's looking I was, I've been playing around with this because th there's a very small thing that really bugs me and I'm trying to find a work around that but uh, either way you break the time to get the hours minutes and seconds they get split up now in the in the other one I I did use the same amount of values but I didn't set up seconds I don't think if I remember correctly uh, because I think I ran it off the minutes but because I want the seconds I ran it from seconds instead um, and I'm putting all these into append I, I've broken the append up into A to E and I've just stuck in those little colons in the middle just to break it all up and make it look kind of realistic and nice we cast to the player to get our time now it says our time that's where I've been messing around but it is normally just time um, and we just put that time into the straight into the return value um, to be honest I probably could just put this append in there um, I think this is just left over from where I was setting up the time in the level blueprint um, and I have just copied the code over because it all does work um, but yeah so you probably could just pull that pen straight into the return node but this is just how it's set up in the level blueprint in that day night uh, clock cycle uh, tutorial and that's literally everything you have to do to get the, these effects and as I said um, for something that's quite small it really is effective uh, and that thing that was bugging me if you look at the seconds it's only got the four there's no zero there so it doesn't look uniform it's something so small that will only ever last for um, probably about nine seconds but it just still bugs me enough to make me want to go and fix it but um, I haven't found the solution to that yet but yeah and that's that's how I've created this player HUD this kind of unique uh, cam I, I, I actually kind of like calling it a camera HUD because it's not really a player HUD but um, I, the next thing I want to add is into this sort of bottom section where the record is I want to have like a little something that kind of is green then goes to like orange and then flashes red when the player's got very low health um, but we're not quite there yet because I've not started messing around with any player values or um, sort of AI in, at all on this channel yet but um, that's all going to be coming very soon um, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a couple of levels very basic probably just going to be boxes but the idea is that we can transition between levels um, and have the player spawn where we want them to spawn. Uh, and I've done it before and it is so satisfying when it's working. Um, but it's something so important because I think about 80% of games have a form of level transition within them that requires you to move a player from A to B. And weirdly, UE5 tutorials they're all a bit all over the place um, and I have a solution so I'm going to make a video on it using this uh, system we've set up for the res the classic Resident Evil I'm just gonna create um, probably four or five box rooms I'm probably just gonna copy and paste them to be perfectly honest and then I'm going to have one that's got multiple entrances and exits to show you how it returns the player to where it was um, should be a very useful tutorial for everyone I uh, fingers crossed but hopefully you found this very useful thank you so much for watching I know this is a little bit of a filler episode so I do apologize but um, I, I just thought it was really cool and I really enjoyed making it so I, I'm I'm not um, I'm not sorry <laughs> but don't forget to leave a little like leave a little comment with anything you would like to see and um, and hit that subscribe button as always it's free to do helps the channel out and you can always change your mind thank you so much guys i'll see you next time take care bye